All right. Okay, everybody. Good morning. So I've had a suggestion about doing self-defense that they want to do me to do a self-defense kickboxing. Um, I know how to do some kickboxing moves that would be self-defense, but um, before I get started, it's probably going to be an unconventional self-defense video. It's going to be things that I've been taught by my dad, things that I have had to use before in a fight, um, and that worked for me. And I'm hoping to pass this on to all of you, so that way if something should happen, that you will be okay, you'll be able to get out of the situation. The thing that I want to stress to you is that, um, that um, because of my religion, we don't get into martial arts and we don't get into combat sports because kickboxing is the farthest I can ever go with playing around with doing those things for workouts and for fun. Um, I will never get any further than that. So if you were looking for that on my channel, you will not see that. Okay, so I'm just letting you know here and now. I don't go that far. Um, but my thing is, is I look at it this way. I mentioned it in my blog last night. Um, right now, we are living in a world where sometimes you have to be able to defend yourself. Unfortunately, people um, do not make things easy for us. There's situations where we can't help it and we have to do something. We have to do something to get out of the situation, right? And I know um, because of my beliefs and things that someday we will stand and watch the fighting happen. We won't have to fight because somebody else will be fighting for us. So we really won't need to know all these fighting skills for the end. But what we do need is to know enough to be able to get out of bad situations. And in my religion, we fight to defend ourselves solely. We fight and we do not fight to kill. So if you're looking for those kind of things as well, then you might as well just turn off this video and go on your own very way because I will not get into that kind of fight. I will not get into that kind of self-defense. I get into self-defense that will um, maybe uh, immobilize a person long enough for you to get away from them and hopefully watch, watch them in the distance as the cops are coming along and handcuffing them and taking them in the back of the police car where they belong in jail. Okay, so this is what I'm going to teach you today. Um, I'll tell you a story about my about someone something, and then we're going to get into it, and I will show you some moves, and then that will be the end of the defense video. Uh, my thing is this: um, there was a girl who was a bookworm. Everyone in class thought that she didn't know how to fight. She stayed to herself, and she was always in a corner reading. Everyone else was playing games. Uh, once in a while she'd get in on the games, but more likely she'd rather be reading a book, <laughs> okay? So one day um, the class bully decided third, fourth grade that they wanted to keep messing with her and she was tired of it. She was always calling her names, walking around, following her around, um, trying to get her to fight. She wouldn't do it. She'd ignore her and keep walking, do her own thing. And then one day in class, it was a rainy day, couldn't go outside to play. You know how they do the recess inside the, inside the rooms when that happens. And she decided for a joke, I'm going to go tell so-and-so that, that you like him. And I'm like, heck no, I don't hardly even talk to this boy. And I do not have a crush on anybody in my class. I have no interest in any of the boys in my class. So I'm like, why are you doing this? So I was like, that's it. I'm done with this. I don't care if it's just being a goofy kid thing. Um, so walked up to him, to her, and grabbed her by the arm to make her stop. What did she do? She turned around and punched. So she let out that punch, and that was the end of that. Next thing I know, we're exchanging fists. <laughs> our fists are going. Our legs are going. I don't agree with the girly fighting of pulling hair. I want real fighting. I do the real fighting. I do the real stuff. Um, anyway, so before it was over with, she was trying to get me off of her <laughs> because she was starting to get a little scared because she was realizing um, I knew more about fighting than she thought. And so she took a, and took a chair, put it over her head, and I just walked up to her unafraid, and I pushed the chair backwards and snapped her, snapped her arm. 
and she did not go with the chair and fell behind her. So she did, took a desk, emptied the desk of all its content, threw it over her head, still kept walking at her, pushed the desk out from underneath. Next thing you know, you're another snap from the arm. Don't realize that I broke the girl's arm at the time. She goes hiding under the teacher's desk and she stays there <laughs> until the principal comes into the room <laughs> wondering what the world was going on. So after that fight was over, this will let you know how much I really like to do real fighting. I like horseplay. Horseplay is fine. Fighting, no. I was in tears when my mom took me to the car. I had got to go back to school the next day. I didn't get suspended. The other girl did because she was constantly causing trouble with the kids, bullying the other kids. And so the superintendent at the time, which was one of the kids' parents, of course, because that's how they do it sometimes, that was watching over the kids during recess and said that she pretty much deserved what she got because it was about time somebody stood up to her. And after that, I come back the next day and I have the nickname Tiger. <laughs> so the nickname Tiger is carried through with me until this day. Um, and people who knew about the fight and knew about it um, remember my nickname. And um, after that, they were all wanting to see me fight because they realized that um, I could do a little more than they thought. So with that being said, I will show you some techniques but I will show you in a way that is, like I said, it's not meant to kill. It's meant to just get get them um, disabled enough that you can run. <laughs> so first thing I want to show you while I'm sitting on my knees is I'm coming really close to the camera. Now, a lot of you do not realize this, but if somebody is coming at you and they're just trying to grab you to pull you away and you don't want them to touch you right here on your hand i want you to take your hand your finger your thumb right here and i want you to press as hard as you can right there of course you're not going to be able to do it to yourself as hard as you would do it to somebody you're trying to get away from because automatically you're going to feel a twinge and a pain right there okay what this does is if you press in hard enough on this person's hands right there in that spot it will cause their whole hand and their arm up to here will end up going numb and they're going to automatically snatch back. They're going to pull back from you because they're not going to like the way that feels. That for just a moment will cause them to have enough pain that they're going to be pulling back from you and probably sitting here doing this before they decide to make their next move on you. Okay, that's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do as I agree with an open-handed fist over a closed fist at times open-handed fist right here is what you're going to do is you're going to go right here for their nose okay but what i want to tell you is to be very careful about how hard and how far you shove your hand into their nose because what that can do is it can take this bone right here push it right into the brain and it'll instantly kill them so again remember i'm not teaching you to do that so you're going to take the palm of your hand right here and boom right here Hit them nice and hard, just hard enough that it's going to cause shooting pains up in here. And it will cause shooting pains up in there. And that, again, is going to hopefully stop them because they're not going to like how their bone and all this right through here, all the sinus cavities is going to automatically be in pain after you hit them hard enough there. Another thing you can do with an open end fist, right here, right here, you're going for that spot. You hit them hard enough right in here, it could actually stop their heart. But what it also does, and especially if they're asthmatic, so you hope your assailant is, is it will make them quit breathing. They will have to stop. And they'll be doing this for a little bit. When they're bent over like that and they're trying to catch their breath because they're not going to expect you to wham really hard in their chest. You're going to put a stop to them for a few seconds because they're going to be trying to catch their breath and they're not going to be expecting it. Because what do you do when you get in a fight? Your fists are going, your feet are going, your legs are going. They're not, they're going to, a lot of people, assailants are going to look at that and be like, if you, especially if you start with this, they're going to automatically think you don't know what you're doing. She's coming up at me with an open-handed fist. She doesn't know how to fight. He, she cannot fight wrong 
This is a good defense mechanism right here, okay? So, next thing is if the assailant is coming at you and you know ahead of time that they are, one thing that I've learned is there is an awake article, and I'm doing this for all my witness friends, okay? That did, that we were talking about out in service. I was talking about oh, with um, Jesse Meek and Michelle Foss and a few other sisters. And I was told them, I said, you can't own a gun. Witnesses aren't allowed to have a gun. And they said, no, that's actually not necessarily true. And they said, you need to go read this Watchtower article. I mean, this Wake article. Now, I wish I could remember what it was. Because in the article, it says you can have one for self-defense. But the thing is, is what you have to do is, the rule is, you have to call out to that person. And you have to tell them, I'm getting ready to defend myself. You might want to take a step back. I will defend myself. So, that's what you do. If you are in that situation, that's how you start out. If you know the assailant's coming after you. Okay, so what's another thing that's a defense done mechanism that won't kill but, uh, but will maim people? Another thing that I really like to stress is how many movies do we watch? Horror movies, murder movies, um, where the assailant comes after them and kills them. And what is the first thing they do? They hear the footsteps behind them. They look over the shoulder. They realize that somebody is after them to try to harm them. You bolt and run, right? That's what they do in those stupid movies. Wrong move. Don't bolt and run. Why? The assailant is wanting you to bolt and run. Because they're going to chase you. Because then they can jump on you. Boom. Knock you down. Okay? Don't bolt and run. What you do... Look over your shoulder. It looks like they're going to try something on you. That's when you turn and twist and you look that person dead in the eye. Do not take your focus off their eyes. A lot of times, if you turn around and do a 180 on that person and you look them dead in the eye, if they were up to no good, they're going to back down. Why will they back down? Half the time, these people who are going to come at you from the back, they're cowards. They want, don't want a real fight. They want the easy route. So the easy route for them is coming up on you from behind where you're not going to have a chance to fight very much. So if you do a 180 on that person, turn around and stare them dead in the eye. I guarantee that's going to stop them in the tracks because they're going to expect you to start running. What you're doing to that person is you're sending a signal to them when you look them in the eye and to look straight at them, just look at them. You're telling that person right there with your body language, just try me. Come on. Try me. You're telling them, I know how to take care of myself. What do you want from me? Leave me alone. And a lot of times, they're going to start backing away. Especially if you turn to 180 and you start walking towards them. You take a few steps towards them in a stance like this. They're going to start doing this. Ho, ho. I didn't mean anything. I wasn't, didn't mean any harm. Boom. You got them. They'll stand down. If they don't stand down, you need to be ready to go. Okay? But a lot of times, that's one way to do it. Also, when you're walking into your car at night, especially for my coworkers and anyone else out there who works until 10, 11 o'clock at night, when you're walking to your car, there are street lights out there in those parking lots. Are you paying attention? Now, you may look like to an assailant or someone who's been watching you, that you don't, that you're not a and you don't care. You don't know what's around your surrender. Listen to what's around you. Listen to the cars. Listen to different things. If all of a sudden a motor starts and they come in your direction, then pay close attention. You may need to hurry. Best thing to do is to go hide behind another car. And because they can't grab you when you're close to another car, they're going to have to run and ram into that car to get to you. Half the time, if you, especially if you get in between two cars, they're parked close together. One. Two. If you are walking to your car, look down. I love um, Doctor Who. Vastra Narada um, was in the library. And um, Vastra Narada was one of the aliens, and they ate meat. And so, but they were actually shadows. You couldn't see them. So... But did then she always say in that in that thing, for God's sake, count the shadows. 
count the shadows. So basically when you're walking to your car, I guarantee you it's going to be very, very hard for somebody who is trying to follow you close. Um, that's one meaning you harm, um, to be able to keep in perfect step with you when they're following you. You're going to watch the shadows. You see just one shadow next to you. Okay. You're walking out to car with somebody else. You got two shadows there. Fine. No problem. All of a sudden a third shadow appears, but yet they're walking in close proximity to you. What does that tell you? Somebody's after you. That's what it tells you. So that's when you take and you stop to return and do the 180 like I told you. Because I guarantee you, that person, if they're trying to follow your footsteps exactly, they're trying to hide because they're beginning to realize that you're looking at the ground for a reason. That you're paying attention to how many shadows there are. Because if there all of a sudden appears one more, another shadow next to you or behind you, Likelihood, somebody's following you, right? Okay, so make sure you're paying attention to that. All right, so let's say you get into a fight and you have to defend yourself. You have no choice. And first thing you do is mean, like I said, like in the article, you need to let them know that you are about ready to defend yourself. If they're after your purse or your wallet, drop your purse or wallet. Don't let them mug you. Then um, nine times out of ten, that's all they want is, is your belongings. So that's the first thing you try. Try dropping your purse or your wallet if they will not stand down. And back up from it. If they take it, they're going to take it and run because they just feel like they just won, right? They may have, but you won. Why? Because you can replace your valuables in your purse. You can put stop and stops on your credit card so they can't charge on them. You can replace your license. You can replace anything that is in your purse. Can you replace your life? No, you cannot. So they may think they won, but in the end, you are the one who won. Okay? So drop it. See how it happens. See what happens. If they're after you personally, dropping your purse or your wallet is going to do nothing for them because they're going to keep coming right at you. That's when you say, you need to stop right where you are because do not, I will defend myself. The first blow comes and they try to get you and what does an assailant do? They're wanting to take you out. They're trying to knock you down so they can kidnap you, do whatever they're wanting to do to you, rape you, whatever it may be. So a lot of times they are going to go for your head. Okay. So you're ready. They're coming at you. You warned them. I'm going to fight you. You don't stop and stand down. So they do get ready to do the first blow. What do you do? Right. And remember, let's hook right hook, right? But what you're going to do is you're going to pay attention to whether they're using the left hand or the right hand. A lot of times they're going to go in for maybe a straight jab or an angle jab because they're going for your head. So they're going to either be doing boom, boom, like this. Okay. So basically you're going to stand here and immediately that arm better be coming up. Other arm better be coming up, right? Here's the thing. Left hand up. Open. Remember I taught you open fist. Why an open fist? If they come at you at an angle with their left, they're going to come right towards here because what they're going to do is they're automatically going to, going to try. If they're paying attention and they've learned self-defense techniques themselves, they're going to notice that you're trying to ward off their blow. So they're going to see that arm go up. So instead of going for the arm, they're going to kind of redirect and kind of curve around and try to come here on this side right here. Okay. So if you have an open hand fist, they're going to take that fist and that fist instead of going into your face, it's going to go into the palm of your hand. What do you do with the palm of your hand? Close it. Close your hand around their fist. Now, if they're working hard enough at pushing towards you, you may not get too far with stopping it. So it may still come here, but then you're not going to get hurt quite as bad, correct? While you have that fist in your hand, do your very best to get the other arm out and around. At the same time, I want you to take that fist and concentrate on that fist that he isn't just putting your hand, he or she has got in your hand. You're gonna push it forward and use all your strength and push it forward. And then you're gonna take it and while you're pushing forward, you're gonna do a hard push as hard as you can because they're still coming at you. They're still trying to hit you. So you're pushing against them and then you're gonna twist. So when you do that, push and twist. See how my arm went? That's what their arm's going to do. So right here, if you do it nice and hard and pushing back at the same time, 
it's a good chance that they are going to end up having a nice little snapping sound right in here. What it's going to do is it's going to cause a sharp pain in the arm. They're usually going to let go and they're going to look at you. About that time, that's when you go in and you drive it home and you punch them right there where it counts. Another thing you want to do is, and that's going to knock them for a loop. They're going to stand back for a minute. I'm going to give you a chance to get away, but a lot of times they're going to come back at you. So you don't want to turn and run on them yet. You want to be ready. And the thing is, is when you kick, I want you to take a low kick. There's a high kick. There's a low kick. So what you're going to do is you're going right for the stomach and they're going area. So you're going to take it up chamber, bam, as hard as you can. And then that's going to disable them because they're going to be doing this. Take your knee and take your elbow right into the back. Boom, really hard. Knock them down while they're bent over, knock them down to the ground. And guess what? You're hightailing it to your car. Bye bye. That's the visa, baby. There you go. There's one way to do it. So what if they gonna get you on the ground? Let's say they got you, they knocked you over before you had a chance to turn around because they realized that what you're getting ready to do is turn and face them. You're laying flat on the ground. And what are they gonna do? They're gonna come at you, they're gonna try to drag you. You have nothing around to grab onto. So what are you gonna do with your hands? Your and feet are up in the air. Half of you is up in the air. You're having a hard time grabbing onto anything because there's nothing to grab onto. What you're gonna do is I want you to put your hands out and you're gonna do your very, very best to crawl forward with your hands and continue to crawl forward with your hands. Don't stop that motion. At the same time, while they're pulling you, I know this is hard to concentrate on because all you can do is think about the fact that, oh my God, they're yanking me backwards. Um, but what you're gonna to try to do is to pull yourself or like this. And at the same time, wiggle your feet, wiggle your legs. I know that sounds crazy, but if that's how you get out of stuff. That's when I would horse place all of them all the time and people start doing crap and doing stuff like that to me. That's what how I would always get out of being pinned or anything. A lot of people freeze because they get scared. They don't know how to move. Oh, there's nothing I can do now. They're dragging me. They're pinning me. I have nothing I can do. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Moving is what you keep and what you can do. So you're going to pull your hands and crawl your hands forward like this on the ground, even though it's probably going to make you bleed. Is your life more important than having scraped up hands? I say so. So that's what you do. And then you keep your feet turning and wiggling because more than likely they're grabbing you either here or they're grabbing you right here. So what you're going to do or they're grabbing you up here a little higher on your leg. So as long as you are forcing your legs to move, twist, wiggle, anything you can do, what's going to happen is it's going to loosen their grip and they're going to let go of you. Or if nothing else, they're going to have to re-grip. And it's at that instant where they're trying to get a better hold on you that that is your chance to get away. Because if you're wiggling around, likely you're going to at least get one foot free, correct? That's when you can boom, smack them. As hard as you can with them, foot that gets free, turn, kick, bam. You've got them because more than likely, with the way they're leaning over, you're gonna directly in the face. <laughs> Sorry, but that's probably what's gonna end up happening. Other thing is, if they pin you down, they're laying on you. This was always fun for me when I would wrestle. Um, is right here, get your hands. If your hands are out here, slowly, maybe you have to work them in. So it might take you a minute to get this done. It's fine. Seconds count though. So do it as quick as you can. Concentrate in your hands out here in front of you the best that you can. You're going to press like this with your hands and your elbows. And this is how I would always get out of being pinned is press up as hard as you can. And don't take it nice and slow. You are going wham, as hard as you can up, take it back, kick up and twist next thing you know they're on the floor and you're out of the pen so that's how you do it again up under it's just like you do you know everybody's done their own version of worm right so it's like doing the worm 
So you're pressing up nice and hard. And if you can, you want to concentrate on having your shoulders and your elbows out like this. Reason why is because, again, you don't know your assailant well enough to know um, what the kind of defense techniques they learn. If they have learned enough of them, they're going to immediately, when they feel you starting to wiggle like that, they're going to say, nope, I'm not letting you get out of this. They're going to automatically try to start wrapping their arms around your arms. If you're up like this, when you're doing it, it's going to be a little bit harder for them to get a good hold on you because while you're doing this, you're pushing really hard with your elbows and your shoulders. Boom. And then... You can completely get your arms and your hands free. And then they'll come off of you. And they'll be done. <laughs> if they pin you forward, then you want your hands in front of your face. Push them, their face, and push them forward. Take your, get your, and then as soon as you can get them up off of you and up, you should be able to get one leg free, go into a chamber, laying down, and bam! Give them a nice kick right in the groin or the stomach region. And I guarantee you, they're going to let go of you. Okay? So those are just a few things that you can do to protect yourself. Other things is I know with kickboxing, you want to always keep your hands by your face. And the reason you do that is to keep from them angling your face up, correct? So if you go into a kickboxing stance and they're fighting with you like that, then you're going to do this. Boom. Boom, and down, and then chamber it out and, uh, and kick. But if you want to, I really know what inside wrestler is looking for. You need to go for a low punch, and you need to go for a low kick. So what you're going to do is you're going to, when the incoming punch is coming, duck it under. So instead of going up high, you're going to duck really fast, and bam, boom. And when you kick out like and punch out like this, you're gonna hit them right in their groin area. Absolutely. So you're gonna take it down. Once you hit down, try and practice it one more time with me. Down, bam, up, down, bam. Just like that. When it comes to the kick, take it into low and boom. And boom. And you can do it again and even facing forward. All you have to do is up and boom. But take a low kick instead of a high kick. Right here. Okay, do a combo with me. Ready? Just for fun. Let's play. <laughs> Take it out and bam. Take it down and bam. And kick, kick, boom, boom, wham. They're down on the ground. Soon as you get that elbow in the middle of their back, they're down on the ground. Okay, last thing. Um, why is somebody strangling you? Usually, they're leaning out like this a little bit. So it's hard to get this, right? So first instinct is when somebody is strangling you. I probably will do the same thing on oh, that and it's just instinct. Is you're gonna take your hands over them like this and dig in with your nails. And a lot of times that don't work because they're already in this heated state and their adrenaline's going and they're not going to feel that, <laughs> okay? So all it's going to do is they're going to grip their and make it tight, <laughs> their grip a little tighter. A lot of times your hands are down, correct? That's why you're able to put your hands over the top and dig in with your nails. So what you're going to do at this point is there's one thing that I think is the best way to handle this is take your arms up and over, right, okay? So they're here, you're coming here, but you're not doing what it looks like I'm going to have you do. What you're going to do is you're going to take your fist or your hand in a karate chop form or into fist mode, and you're going for their elbow, because right here, they're here, their elbow's going to be here, you're reaching around and you're right here, and keep hitting it and hitting it right in here, and yanking it down as hard as you can with the other hand. Eventually, what it's gonna do is it's gonna make them loosen up and it's gonna keep loosening up and boom, they're gonna be out. Okay, they let go. Then you take in another low kick right to the groin and push them away 
and you have successfully gotten out of being strangled okay and so i know that this is probably not what insider wrestling is looking for exactly but see those are some techniques that i would use and that like i said i've been in fights before and i have used another thing that my dad will tell you if he was alive that caused him to win fights when somebody started a fight with him was um just to move very fast and the reason you want speed on your side is because a lot of times if you go slow it's calculated moves correct they can calculate what you're doing they can see you're coming with this fist they can see you're coming with this with this leg if you are moving or super fast on them they can't keep up with your movement they can't tell where they're going left right and up down in out they won't know what you're doing they'll just be standing there looking at you like what the i can't even keep up with them to protect myself um so you want speed on your side so that means that you want your adrenaline to get pumping in you want to move fast because when you move fast they cannot calculate your movements and it would be hard for them to counteract you and therefore you're more likely to win that fight in self-defense and get away so i don't like i said i don't only fight out of self-defense and it hasn't had to happen in a long time but i tell you if i have to use it i will and um good thing about me is I only go to work and home, so good chance that <laughs> it will be hard for somebody to mess with me because they'd have to actually come directly to my house when my husband is not home, or they would have to mess with me in the parking lot, and uh, guaranteed as soon as uh, and some employees start seeing a fight breaking out, there will be the cops will be there, and also I'm be like, uh, yeah, we might both be in trouble, but you're going to be more in trouble because guess what? You're the one that throws the through the first punch, and you started the fight with me. I don't ever throw the first punch and I don't ever be the first one to make the move um, because that's the way I was taught. I was taught you only fight out of self-defense because that's the way we're allowed to fight. And um, my parents always said, don't ever let anybody bully you. And if somebody hits you, you hit them back. <laughs> don't let people mess with you. So I've been, learned that a long time ago and I've had to... Now, unfortunately, I've had a few fights because I've had to defend myself because they did throw the first punch. So I hope this helps somebody. Um, I know my ne ne techniques are unconventional and because I didn't do it with somebody else, maybe hard to understand. Um, but I did say that I would try to do one and try to do one in a way that I felt would be okay for me as a, uh, with my religion, um, how we would handle it. And because I feel that's the way it should be done. And I also will tell you one more thing. If somebody comes in with a gun and they're trying to shoot at you, I know you guys know this one. Everybody's seen this, right? You run, you don't run straight. You run like this. You want to run at a diagonal. So we're gonna go left to right, constant moving forward, then left, then right, and forward, and then left, then right. You're constantly changing your movements all the time. You don't want to go in a straight forward because then you're easy target. You want to go from side to side, back and forth as fast as you can and try to change up your pattern the whole entire time until you can get in a place of safety. So there you go. I hope this helps somebody. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. Check me out on my Facebook. And I really hope that this is self-defense video does help someone out there. And it's probably not exactly what um, these two people were looking for, but this is kind of how I would do self-defense. So I hope it does help somebody, if, even if it's just one person. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Whatever you do, keep moving, keep eating healthy, and do not give up on yourself. Remember, you are important. You are special. You mean something to somebody out there and they need you and they want you around. So keep going, keep taking care of yourself so you can continue to be there for the ones who love you and that you love. Have a great day, everyone.